Well, let's get talking now. Amidst increasing concerns over carbon emissions and other impacts on the environment, the call for renewable energy has never been more urgent. Memon's proactive approach to embracing clean energy technologies reflects a forward-thinking mindset that is essential for the long-term prosperity of the nation. By prioritizing the development and adoption of sustainable energy solutions, Nigeria can reduce its carbon footprints, mitigate environmental risk, and pave way for a more resilient and eco-friendly economy. I'm being joined by the Executive Secretary and Chief Executive Officer uh, of the Major Energies Association of Nigeria, Meman, Mr. Clement Isong. He joins me from Uyo in Akwaibom State. Thank you so much. It's good to have you on the program. Thank you, Tolu. It's been a while. That sounds so nice, Meman, when you when you when you mention it. Thank you so much. Yes, let's start with that rebranding process of from Moman to Meman. Uh, let, what really is the motive behind this change of this uh, change of name and at this time? Thank you, Tolu. It's not just a change of name. Okay. It's a complete reinvention okay. of the way to business. Um, Nigeria is a country. Um, has been focused on oil and gas. Uh, we as a business, our roots are in oil and gas, but the world is not just changing, it has changed. Um, Nigeria needed a change of policy, uh, the oil and gas policy to make the other energies viable. Um, the role of the subsidy all of a sudden uh, uh, makes it incumbent on us to take another look at the way we do business and to make these other energies, the renewable energies, alternative energies available to the public. So uh, my members, like I said, I've taken a, a, a couple of weeks, a couple of months to reinvent the way they, they, we do business, whether it is in terms of the way we operate to reduce our own emissions from our distribution business and up, up to the offer that we make to our customers. Our customers, uh, across the economy uh, to make uh, other energies, alternative energies available to them, uh, to make uh, energies uh, more affordable to the customer, but also to reduce uh, emissions um, from these energies to the, in, into the atmosphere. Uh, government, of course, to make some refineries functional. I I'm interested in this very seriously. What I call refinery after the 1.5 billion from the AFDB and what's happening with Dangote refinery receiving shipments of crude and to start production. Uh, what really uh, is the impact? I think you'll be able to tell us better what impact this will have on the entire value chain or the sector itself. You know, sometimes you do not see the forest for the trees. Um, those refineries coming on board signal a significant change, not just in my industry, but in the economy as a whole. Uh, as a country, um, as a continent, we all want the full beneficiation of our natural resources. We want it done at home. Um, it brings jobs, it brings uh, savoir faire, knowledge, it brings foreign exchange. And um, that is where we are. Um, those refineries coming on stream, producing uh, petroleum products at home, uh, and, and, and good quality petroleum products at that, uh, can only be good for the economy, can only be good for, 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 for all Nigerians. It's a really exciting time for all of us. Mm. Are we looking at just affecting pricing in any way, I, I want to ask. Uh, when you say affecting prices, we've already made the decision as a country that uh, the price of petroleum products will be the, the correct price. Uh, there will be no, no, no subsidies. I think uh, the key challenge in having a stable price in petroleum products is the, is the challenge of availability of foreign exchange. But um, producing at home is the first step in resolving that challenge. Uh, for as long as uh, foreign exchange is stable, then the prices of petroleum products will be stable. It's stability that we're looking for, but uh, cost recovery is a given. We can no longer go back 
in subsidies. Mm. So you've mentioned the big one, the big elephant in the cupboard, that's forex scarcity. The issue remains on the front burner of every business operating in the country. Even if you're going to buy something beside, just on the roadside here, you hear, do you know how much the dollar is changing for the Naira? So it affects almost everything. Yes, that's what we see. So really, on the price of PMS imports at the moment, what's that fluctuation? How is the dollar thing affecting that? Let's be honest with ourselves. Um, we in my industry are, uh, are really unable to import uh, PMS right now uh, because um, if the price of PMS was going up at the same rate, the uh, parallel market dollar rate was going up. Um, I, 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 I don't think anybody would like it. We that we are selling and you that you are buying, nobody will find that uh, very, very exciting. Um, PMS is a product that impacts all of us uh, because it impacts all our transportation. So if you are talking about forex going up, many people do not actually touch or see dollar on a daily basis, but uh, PMS does touch them on a daily basis. So it's, um, it, it is important that um, there is foreign exchange stability. It is important that uh, there is uh, price stability when it comes to PMS also. Mm. So uh, at the moment, you've answered my next book. What came to my mind was to ask you if marketers can import. So does it mean that NNPC remains the sole importer even at the moment? Yes. To be honest, that is the truth uh, for PMS. NNPC is the, is the sole importer. Uh, however, um, like I said, the Dangote refinery has started production. Um, the um, Kotaka refinery has started production or will soon start. Uh, we are in a, a transitionary phase in which it will take a few days, a few weeks, a few months for things to somewhat stabilize. That's why I say um, we, we need to look at the big picture. The important thing is that we are on track. We are heading in the right direction. It's painful, it's difficult, and we are all going through the teething uh, the challenges but we are on the right track and we need to, to keep at it. We need to stabilize the foreign exchange. We need to trust somewhat, the, the, we need to be able to store value in the Naira and not just in, 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 in dollar. We need to trade in the Naira and not just in, in dollar. And the day we are able to do that, we're able to have confidence in our own national currency, you will find uh, comfort coming back to so energy transition is the word er everywhere. We see the discussions everywhere. Even uh, uh, the president was at uh, Dubai, COP28, and all was the talk was about clean energy and, and all of that. But my question really would be, is Meman ready to key into this agenda, energy transition moving forward? And is Nigeria ready to also take part in this? We cannot deny First of all, that uh, fossil fuels, oil and gas, will remain with us for a very long time. It's not going anywhere. Uh, renewable energy, energies alone cannot satisfy the world's energy needs. And um, Nigeria is a petroleum country. Nigeria is particularly a gas country. We need to take advantage of these resources. We need to, uh, uh, we, we, gas uh, has been, namely transition energy. So we need to take full advantage of these resources for our own energy needs, but also to generate the, 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 the money that we, 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 we need for the further development of our country. But having said that, it is also true that Nigeria is energy rich in terms of, of solar, in terms of the sun that we have. It's also true that uh, Nigeria is energy rich in terms of the uh, uh, gas that we have. It's also true that Nigeria is energy rich in terms of wind, in terms of water. Um, we simply need to adjust the 
energy mix in such a way that we are not fully dependent on oil and gas, uh, whose emissions happen to be um, uh, of all the energies that I have named, uh, uh, the most uh, emitting. Uh, agriculture is, a, is an important opportunity for us uh, because uh, um, ethanol or other biofuels is an opportunity. We are a country in which uh, agriculture presents a very large opportunity for us. And um, the day that we are able to convert uh, uh, that agricultural resource, not just to, for, to the food that we eat, but also to um, agro-processing, also to use it in our energy mix, I think uh, Nigeria will benefit uh, from all these resources that God has given us. Mm. Now, what sort of conversation are you having with government regarding LNGs, uh, LPG, I beg your pardon, CNG, or that, you know, we see conversion centers being opened. We see governments pushing for gas-fired vehicles and all of that to address the fallout of subsidy removal. What is MEMAN doing to key into this and what sort of conversation are you having or do you expect to have moving forward? Well, we have been speaking with government. We have been engaged with them, not just us, uh, MEMAN, but uh, the rest of the private sector in partnership with, for instance, the NGA. Um, we are all engaged. And you must remember that uh, uh, there has been the decade of gas declared a little while back. Uh, there is a decade of gas office uh, in the uh, uh, accommodated in the, in the authority, in the uh, Nigerian uh, uh, the downstream and midstream uh, authority. Um, we, in our own case, Peman, we are setting up a competency center because we've determined that that is one of the key challenges. The key challenges is we need to properly identify where the safety risks are and mitigate them. We need to identify what the numbers are in the game. Where is the supply? How much does it cost? Uh, how much does it cost to transport? We need to properly also identify uh, there are just not enough people who have been in this uh, CNG. So um, we need to develop the competencies. Those are all uh, discussions that we are having with the government, We're moving as quickly as we can. Our contribution is the competency center, which will provide these competencies to the Nigerian market so that uh, we are able to deliver on this uh, policy initiated by the government. Mm. Well, uh, oh, finally, let's look at the outlook now for the entire space. I, I am worried two ways. We still have issues with all theft, we are not able to meet up with OPEX quota. Uh, and, um, of course, many will say we can sell more oil to get more dollars. So what's your outlook considering some of these challenges? We are talking about um, refining coming through very soon. What's your outlook for the entire space globally and, of course, domestically? Well, I think what is quite clear, when you listen to those in government speak, uh, they have identified what needs to be done. Uh, oil and gas uh, has been our bread and butter. Uh, we need to push up our production um, to 2 million, 2.5 million, 3 million barrels per day. It's not easy to do. It requires investment. So it means that everything you produce today, you cannot uh, uh, use. You need to use some of the money from what you're investing today in order to invest so that you can increase your production, uh, which is the fastest route to success. But there are other things that uh, we are doing or we can do. But I think uh, the focus on uh, other solid minerals and um, running it efficiently is a key opportunity for us as a country. The focus on agriculture and running it efficiently, uh, taking full advantage of not just planting food for food crops to eat, but for agro-processing is a key opportunity for us as a country. So there are many uh, opportunities for us. We are heading in the right direction. We just need to keep the faith. Interesting conversation. I must thank you so much for your time. Executive Secretary, Chief Executive Officer, Major Energies Association of Nigeria, Memon, Mr. Kameth Isang. Thank you so much. Do enjoy your day. Thank you, Tulu. Enjoy your day, too. Have a good weekend. Bye. All right, Dad.